it's hard. I wish I could tie San Diego, um, Dragon Con and KatsuCon, but that wouldn't really be fair. Um, like I had the best time at KatsuCon because it's more anime focused, but I think Dragon Con is like objectively better, like the best. Where is <laughs> where is Dragon Con? It's in Atlanta. So it's over okay. Labor Day weekend and the whole city of Atlanta is Dragon Con basically. Um, is three hotels that are connected. I don't know, five hotels that are connected. It's like wild. Like I don't think I went outside into the real world, um, like the whole convention, but I didn't feel like I was inside. Like it's just huge con- like hotels that are just all connected and everyone's there, um, you know, dressed up, doing multiple costume changes. Every fandom's represented. Um, it's like Katsukan, I would say was maybe like one fifth of Dragon Con, like the anime side of it, but it, like Dragon Con had all the anime. Like I saw tons of Attack on Titan, like people, but then also every other fandom, like video games, comics, you know, movies. Um, I don't know if you know of the 300 cosplayers, but they've, you know, been kind of like a a famous thing for years. I was so excited to go and see them for the first time. I was like 300 cosplayers. Um, They look great, fabulous. Like Spartans? Oh yeah, no, they're Spartans, yeah. Like just ripped, just (laughs) shredded? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a fan Sarah down over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I think, yeah, the Spartans definitely put Dragon Con you know, up to up to number one. So. <laughs> I do recommend it for if you like part like party cons. Um, that is like probably the best there is. That's and- always what I've heard. It's it's a big cosplay party because it's not so much about guests as far as like cinema and tv you know if if anything the guests are more cosplay focused and it's a gigantic cosplay party and we need to go down there and bring jordan down there because you know big shout outs to skylar we can go crash on his couch for a couple days yeah i'm sure that's what skylar wants oh yeah it's very very (laughs) if you have a place to stay and you haven't been to dragon con i don't really know what you're doing because it's um like very very hard to get a room there so um yeah definitely if you have the opportunity take advantage of it um but yeah other good things I would just say like the vibe and the energy was really good there even though there were tons of people um it never felt unsafe no one was creepy um just all the things that could go wrong at cons didn't happen and so props to the organizers and the attendees for just being great those are the best um really there's only one worst and they deserve this title and is New York Comic Con. <laughs> um, Brian, we were Thank not even you. able to meet up. And yeah. I am like still salty about that. Um, I think it's this. How political do I have to be? No, <laughs> a no, lot of things that went wrong with that con. But I think one of the biggest things as a cosplayer is it is, and I've been there five years now. Yeah, um, yeah we met you when we were still multi popsural. This was like year two, maybe. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. like, so I've, I know this con very well. And yeah. it is by far been getting worse and worse every year mm-hmm. and less and less safe. Um, this is, this past con was honestly the least safe I ever felt as a cosplayer. Um, I think two years ago, they took down the cosplay is not consent signs. And that's small. It's a sign. Like, you know, like, does that really make a difference? Like, clearly, <laughs> like, clearly it does make a difference. Um just like non-consensual, like groping, like Ryan, I need your SVU like skills. You're like, come on now. Oh, we could use you at New York Comic Con. Um, but yeah, you just you didn't really feel any support from the con either. And it's crazy because they use cosplayers' photos to advertise and they don't even give them like a free ticket to go. Um, so yeah, like I'm like very much questioning if I'm going to go again because I was it doesn't sound like anybody should go no no honestly no like I spent Saturday like I um had an amazing Emma Frost cosplay that I was so excited to wear and I was wearing but um shortly after I got into the convention got groped like pretty bad so I spent the day wearing a giant sweatshirt um wasn't able to get to go to any of the panels that I wanted to go to because I physically kept getting like stopped so I couldn't walk to meet up um or to go to the panels if I'd stopped to check my phone like I it, I would not have been able to move um so then I wasn't able to meet up with friends and we're not going to turn this into a whole rant but New York Comic Con really needs to do better <laughs> uh, 
Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I, and, I, you know, I remember you telling me that, and I, I feel so, so terrible for you. Because yeah. even, this was, you know, my fiance's first real Comic-Con. And, I mean, your experience doesn't compare anything to mine at all whatsoever. And, I mean, if you're listening out there and you think that this is fucking cool to do, like, go out and grow cross players, like, stop listening to the podcast. <laughs> this podcast is not for you. The worst! She is the worst person in the world. Huge, skank, terrible. But thank you. It means a lot. <laughs> Bye-bye. Please stop listening. No, stop going out in fucking public. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, go be a go fuck. Don't don't be an asshole. Don't be exactly. a fucking weirdo. Don't be a exactly. fucking creep. Like, yeah, and not just, just at conventions. Be a normal person and everything. Like when you go out in public, like treat people with respect. With respect, plain and simple. You know, whether if you have a kid or not. You know, I and mean, you know, I mean, you both know I have a daughter, and I'm just like God. I, I'd be doing 25 to life if, if some shit happened like that to my kids. So Sarah, I'm definitely. Sorry that happened for you, but I mean, I agree with you 100%, and I can't tell if it's New York Comic Con or Read Pop in general, and I haven't gone to that many Read Pop conventions because I know they do Emerald Con, they do C2E2, they do a bunch of other ones, but I really feel like prior to the pandemic, it was more fan-friendly, and since mm-hmm. the pandemic, it's just been a gigantic cash grab. And, 100%. and and meeting the fans and even the whole check-in process of trying to go to your favorite panels and stuff has been an entire nightmare. And when you're raking in that much money, you know, get, get some people to actually work your mobile apps and your websites. Cause I remember the day that all the panels went live, the whole system crashed, which we get it, you know, it's That's technology, right. you know what I mean? But at the same time too, I was going to panels that I thought I had reserved a spot to, that everybody and their mom was just walking into like the walking dead panel, you know? So it was just, it's not well, it hasn't been well ran for, for the last couple of years. I agree with you. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate that, that you're not feeling safe out there. So, you know, yeah, I know that we don't want to get on our high horse about this, but at the same (laughs) time, like, I feel like if we don't say anything about it, then nothing's going to get done. Yeah, no, I appreciate um, the opportunity to rant about it because, you yeah. know, there's such a pressure yeah. on social media to just, you know, always be like, everything's so great. And yeah. it's like, well, you know, it's we should not call that great. No, <laughs> no, no, no it's un, it's unacceptable, to be 100%. honest with you, for the amount of money that people spend, yeah. uh, the time, the resources that they commit yeah. uh, to, to go there, they should be going above and beyond to um you know ensure that people are safe i mean safe safety is paramount right like let's start there and then everything else trickles down so i don't know okay 